What's up students? It is, I don't know, week 109 of quarantine. Some feels that way. Uh, I don't know about you, I don't want to presume, but uh, my hunch is that things are occasionally tense at home. I think most of us are feeling that with our families. And we love our families. It's, it's not about love. But anytime you trap a group of people day in, day out, week after week, in the same home with nowhere really to go, it's gonna start to build some tension. You're gonna start to have fights, right? I, I, I would imagine for some of you, you're dealing with like, everyone's on the Wi-Fi at the same time and it is slowing everything down. Uh, or you've got like that one family member who always uses all the hot water. Uh, you've got someone who is eating your clearly marked quarantine snacks. Uh, I, I, growing up, I always had this, the, you have a little brother or sister who is for no reason ever supposed to be in your room, and yet they keep finding reasons to go in your room and mess with your stuff. You might feel like your parents are going out of their way to keep you busy, and so they're giving you these lists of chores that have never been done in the history of your house, and all of a sudden it's your responsibility. It, it can be rough, I get it. And for some of you, you might be dealing with heavier stuff than that. I'm not saying that stuff isn't a big deal because it's an issue, it causes fights. But some of you are facing just like heaviness at home. Like maybe, maybe one of your parents has already lost a job in the middle of this craziness. And it's just adding so much pressure and fear and tension around the house. Uh, some of you, before coronavirus was ever a thing, you had a pretty rough home situation. And now this is just piled on top and it's just making everything worse and you just kind of want to lock yourself in your room and wait for it all to be over. I don't know where you fall on that spectrum from slow Wi-Fi to hiding in your room for months, but all of us on some level are dealing with how to live with our families through this crisis. And, and that's not an easy thing. But we've got to figure out a way to do it, right? Because we've got some more time ahead of us in this thing. All right, it, it doesn't look like we're just gonna get a, a alert on our phone that says, hey, coronavirus is over, go back to regular life. Like this is gonna be a slow process. And so I wanna point us to just one place in the Bible that, that gives us some insight or some help on how we can best live with our families through this really difficult time. And it's in the book of Philippians and it's written by a guy named Paul and he's talking about Jesus and how Jesus gives us the perfect example for how to deal with all of our relationships really, but, but especially right now, how to deal with our families. And I know before I even start, you're thinking like, yeah, but that's Jesus, like the son of God. He had this unfair advantage going on. I'm just trying not to flip out on my brother. In another spot in the Bible, it, it tells us that Jesus understands better than we can really know just how difficult our temptations are. It says he understands our weakness because he faced all the same temptations that we face. So when you're tempted to strangle your little brother, Jesus gets it because he was tempted with the same thing. He also had a little brother. But at the same time, he provided us a perfect example for how to deal with that temptation and how to better treat the people in our lives. So I just want to read this, this chunk of Philippians chapter 2 where, where Paul shows us how to handle our relationships. And picking up in verse 4, he says, Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave, some translations say servant there, and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Essentially saying Jesus had everything going for him. He was God. He deserved to be worshipped and served and to sit on his throne and just live that amazing life. And yet he chose to give all of that up and to humble himself and become a servant for us. And it talks about the lengths Jesus went, which was dying on a cross for us. And Paul says we are to have the same attitude. He's not saying we're supposed to die on a cross for our families, but we are supposed to humble ourselves and serve our families. And now, I know the initial thought goes back to like, yeah, but that's Jesus. Like, you have no idea how hard that would be in my home right now. Like, somebody always grabs the remote first and I'm stuck watching whatever stupid show when I really have my own stuff I want to do. 
as if Paul knew we were going to have that objection. Just a few verses later, he tells us this, which I, I think is just so encouraging. In verse 13, he writes, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Students, this is not about just having more willpower or trying harder or doing better. This is about God working in you and not only giving you the ability to humble yourself and serve your family, but even giving you the desire to do that. It's about letting God love your family through you. And so my challenge for you this week is simple. When you're living with your family and one of those moments comes up where you just, you can feel a fight coming on, I want you to pause and I want you to think about how you can humble yourself and serve. It's that simple. Humble yourself and serve. To humble yourself may mean that you have to set aside what you want in that moment. That you may at times have to set aside what you think is even fair for the sake of somebody else. And to serve them, it, as simply as I can put it, is to just figure out how you can make their life better that day. What can you do in that moment where you could choose to flip out and engage in a fight? What could you do instead to make things better for them? And students, if you will do this, I can guarantee over time, it's going to change the dynamic of your family. It doesn't matter what anyone else in your home is doing. If you will humble yourself and serve the people in your family, things will get better. Things will start to change. The relationships will start to get smoother because you are being a difference maker in your home. So students, right now you're going to go talk in your groups about what this looks like specifically in your world. But I, I sincerely pray for all of us, myself included, that this week as we engage with our families, we will constantly be thinking, how can I humble myself and serve?